think uh, pillar drill is arguably the most useful tool you could have in your workshop, certainly one of the most useful tools you have in your workshop. Um, here's mine behind me, which I got quite recently. Um, it's a Meddings Pacera pillar drill from probably the 1950s, I guess, and um, part way through refurbishing it, trying to get it up to a usable working standard. It wasn't in bad condition when I got it, it was actually running, um, however, um, somehow in the process of refurbishing it, it now doesn't run. Uh, the motor has um, expired, uh, so um, I'm going to fit a new motor to it today. Here's a closer look at the drill. Um, as it stands at the moment, uh, originally when I bought it, it was covered in this green gloss, some of which I've taken off. And uh, it wasn't the neatest job in the world, but it's done quite uh, a good job of preserving uh, preserving the metalwork and stopping it from going rusty. Um, so uh, all in all, that's not a bad thing. And I've gradually been taking off that um, that green paint and um, getting it back to the grey before I uh, before I repaint it in due course. Here you can see the top opened and the front uh, spindle with um, with the speed control pulley there. And of course, there's a matching pulley which is in this box down here that goes on top of the motor. This is the original motor. It's obviously Due to its age, it's an imperial size, 5 8 spindle, and it's a half horsepower. Um, not uh, not normally found in equipment these days, has everything switched over to metric. Um, however, I have found a replacement, which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, this is the original control gear. There was um, uh, a press button stop start. However, this isn't a magnetic stop start. It's just um, an on-off switch. So in the event that the power drops out and then came back again, on again the um, the machine will start running which is uh, which is not great. I've bought a replacement switch for that which I'll also show you uh, and that um, was wired back to this old um, steel cased or cast iron I'm sure cased uh, isolator. So I've stripped all that off and uh, I've got some uh, new replacement gear to fit to the machine. This is the new no volt release switch that I've bought for the drill um, to control the motor and it's got an e-stop button as you can see as well as uh, a magnetic um, stop and start button so that in the event that the power to the shed fails uh, or a trip goes or something and it gets reset then um, the drill will um, will not come back on come back on of its um, of its own accord and um, it comes with a little um, wiring diagram and I got that on eBay um, cost me about um, 25 quid I think um, I think there are cheaper ones but this seemed like um, quite a good quality one. So this is the new motor, well hopefully, in this box uh, that I got from uh, Beats and Fans and Motors um, there in Sheffield and uh, their website is www.beatson.co.uk and they uh, supply motors uh, of all shapes and sizes uh, including these Imperial 5 8 motors um, which uh, aren't normally found these days, as I said earlier. So I'm going to open this up and uh, have a look. Okay, so there we have it. New motor. Half horsepower. So in new money, that's 0.37 of a kilowatt. 240 volt and a little wiring diagram that's handy. Test certificate from Beatsons. Great. Just opened up the little uh, inspection plate on the end of the motor, and I can see the uh, the live and neutral terminals there. And uh, I've just read the little. Uh, instruction leaflet which I don't think is going to come out too well on the video but it uh, confirms the uh, the wiring connections and there's also a rather nice little diagram showing you the correct order for um, washers, lock washers and nuts on the terminal posts. So the motor's come usefully uh, strapped to this piece of uh, scrap plywood keep it safe in the box, I need to take it off that and, um, and fit, it to, um, fit it to the motor bracket before it goes on to the drill. So while I do this, I'll just explain my thinking behind buying a new motor. I could um, I could have got the old one rewound, I discovered. There are companies 
who uh, will refurbish and rewind old motors. Uh, but the nearest one that I found to here uh, was up in Coventry, which is about, um, about an hour's drive, I suppose. And I thought, well, by the time I got there, back, and then there, back, pick it up again. You know, that's uh, that's a day wasted. And I thought, you know, much as I like to reuse stuff, I might as well go for a, a new one. And this one, uh, which is a British, British made one, um, so it's not a, it's not a cheap and nasty uh, uh, foreign import. Is uh, uh, it was 145 quid, um, I think. Yes, yeah, 145 quid, including VAT and delivery. So I think that's, I think that's pretty good um, for something that was made in the UK. This is the original plate from the drill, which fits on the back and has the motor attached to it. So this is the side that the motor attaches to, and then that then bolts onto the drill. A pivot at the bottom. And uh, you can maybe just make out that mark there. That's where the locking pin uh, screws in against it. So that allows you to tension the uh, the belt by moving the motor backwards and forwards. So, so I'm going to bolt the new motor onto the plate right there, and then I'm going to fit the whole thing onto the drill. So that's the motor bolted up, um, there is a bit of adjustment in the plate, uh, the motor plate itself has got uh, slotted holes going side to side and the plate from the drill oh, it's heavy. <laughs> has got uh, slots going in the opposite direction so you can move it around um, a reasonable amount. Now I don't know exactly where this motor needs to go because it's not quite the same shape as the, as the original 1950s one. But the plates are a very similar sh uh, shape and size, so I've uh, had, a, had, a, had a, good, um, a good guess at where it should go. Also, when the spindle is mounted with the, uh, with the pulley, there's, I won't put that on there, it's a bit too tight. Um, there's a degree of adjustment up and down uh, with that before I put the, um, the, the lock screw in. So I'll be able to um, get height adjustment um, if, it's, if it's only fractional without messing about with the plate. Um, but uh, should, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm now going to put the motor onto the drill, or at least I'm going to attempt to. When I took the old motor off, I used a ratchet strap and I put it around here on the uh, on the, uh, the cowling to take the weight because the um, the old motor was um, or is considerably heavier than this new one. Um, but I think I can probably just manhandle this one into position. Um, but uh, to excuse the uh, <laughs> Uh, grunting and groaning that's bound to uh, bound to happen. This is the pin that uh, holds the bottom of the motor in. That goes through this plate here and goes through the um, the head, I suppose you call it, of the drill. Uh, through that hole there and out through another hole on the other side, which um, I don't know whether you can see on the picture. Um, so I'm going to try and lift the drill into position, and then hopefully with the copper hammer, I'm going to tap the pin in. See what happens, eh? Okay, I've made a schoolboy error, which is to not lock off the rotation of the head of the drill. So I'll start again. Okay, that's locked off. I need to tap the pin back a little way. <laughs> okay, not that far. And I'm going to try again. I think it's just a bit of uh, trial and error because you can't really see very well. Try 
lifting a bit more. Okay, I have another idea. Plan B. I've got a punch, a tapered punch, which I'm going to put through the hole on the other side um, once I've lifted the motor into position. And hopefully I can wiggle the motor into position and drive the pin in um, from this side. See if that works. Right, that's found the, that's found the hole. That's got, that's got it. I've actually not punched right out. I'm going to keep my hand on the slacking off the rotation um, lock on the head and turn it. And I'm going to tap it the rest of the way home. Not quite. I think I'm going to need to use the punch to tap it the rest of the way. Brilliant. So that's now fitted and pivoting about that point there. Here's the locking device. Locking it in a vertical position and there's a second one on the other side <coughs> which you probably, I oh know you can see it, um, which is um, uh, straight head screw on the other side. Okay, so I've got the motor in its uh, most vertical position, pushed it as far as it will go in its adjustment and tightened off uh, this lever here and the um, screw on the other side that I mentioned. And I've turned the machine round uh, to this angle with the lid open so that I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to try and fit the pulley. Here's the pulley. Um, which came straight off the other motor very easily. Um, there's a slot in the um, in the motor spindle which is probably impossible to see from there but uh, you can take my word for it. Um, and I imagine that that's for fitting um, uh, a key. Is it called a Woodruff key? I'm not sure. The type of key that allows you to locate a motor in, um, in a pulley or whatever. Um, however in this scenario there's an Allen key um, Allen key headed uh, grub screw, that's the word I'm looking for, um, in the pulley. And the reason I sound vague is that I'm looking for the Allen key that I've just put down. There it is. Um, so this is a 4mm Allen key. Now I imagine that in this um, old pulley, this is some old uh, ye olde English uh, imperial size, I don't know, Whitworth or something. No, I haven't got any uh, tools like that, but this 4mm um, this Allen key seems to fit, so that'll do. So I'm just going to have a go at fitting this on the spindle. I really hope it fits, and perhaps I should have tried this before I mounted the motor on the uh, on the drill, but hey ho. Oh, that's a bit of luck. That seems to fit treat. I'm just going to turn the Allen key slightly just to see if it engages. Yeah, it does. That's a result. Okay, so I don't really have any point of reference for where this pulley should be. Um, height wise. I know where it should be um, in terms of uh, its relation to the other pulley because I measured the distance between the centre of the motor and the motor plate um, and indeed the drill motor plate if you like uh, and they were within a couple of millimetres uh, exactly the same um, so the adjustment in the in the belt adjuster will, will take up any slack there but as I say I don't know how much uh, I don't know where this should be height wise so I think what I'm going to do is just make the top of this pulley and the top of this pulley the same in relation to the level of the top of this case I can't really see what else I can do so I've got a spirit level here see what that's like well it's not quite level but uh, it doesn't really matter does it I suppose that's the level of the bench and the drill presumably is level in relation to its bed which is the main thing so the drilling would be square so if I make the top of those pulleys the same then that should be okay 
<laughs> this is my theory. So, I got a piece of steel, just a bit of scrap um, angle iron. I'm going to put that on the top of there, pop that on there, and see if I can't adjust it. So it's about the same. And of course, I've tightened the Allen key up, haven't I? Slacken that off slightly. So I think the spirit level bubble was just about. Yeah, something stopping me. That's it. Just about level with the um, the first, the inner of the two black lines on the spirit level. So I'm just going to put that there, tighten it, and have another look at the case. That's a little bit further actually. I think I may need to apply a little bit of leverage to lift the pulley slightly, so I'll just slightly slacken that off again. Hold it in place. Let's put this uh, screwdriver under just to pull it up a little bit. Yes, yeah, so it's just overlapping that line. It's not exactly uh, millimetre accurate, but I think it's probably close enough given that this is going to move outwards with the belt fitted to it anyway, so it's never going to be 100% level. Yeah, I'll go with that. Just take that bit of bar out. And I'm going to tighten that up. Okay. Now I'm now just going to go and dig around in the workshop and see if I can find the new belt that I bought and put somewhere safe. I don't know where that is. Well, I spent a good half hour looking for the new belt um, and I can picture it um, and I can't find it. So for now I'm going to put the old belt back on and uh, that way the new one's guaranteed to turn up in a matter of seconds. So here's the old one going back on. I'm just going to run it down to the bottom for the time being. I'm going to put it on second to slowest speed. The reason for this is that this old belt and the old motor wouldn't line up properly on the very bottom pulley. So I know it works on this bottom one and I'm going to loosen it off here. Just leave it there for the time being um, while I do the rest of the work to the machine and then I'll investigate the reasons why it doesn't uh, line up properly on the bottom. Maybe that problem's gone away with the new motor and its position and may maybe not. So that's slipping off. Mm. Okay, watch this space as far as this is concerned. I'm going to get on and um, sort out the wiring. I finished editing the video um, but I've realised that if I leave it in one piece it's going to be half an hour long so I'm going to cut it off here um, and call this part one. If you want to see part two uh, go to my page and uh, there you'll find part two. The easiest way to do that is to press the subscribe button and please feel free to, uh, to leave a comment and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Bye.